This video covers the basic steps to installing the Fisher & Paykel dish drawer. Please refer to the installation manual provided with your dish drawer before beginning this installation. Warning: Please be sure to refer to the warnings in the installation manual as there are electric shock and cut hazards with this installation. Before beginning, measure the existing opening for the proper dimensions. Place the dish drawer on a protective covering to unpack. Using a utility knife, cut along the styrofoam edges to remove the plastic. Remove the styrofoam pieces. The installation manual is attached to the side of the unit. Locate this before continuing. Carefully lay the dish drawer on its back and remove the bottom styrofoam. Partially unscrew the leveling legs for easier adjustment later. Set the dish drawer back upright and remove the installation components from the lower drawer. Open the bag and locate and identify all of the supplied parts before continuing. Unroll the moisture protection tape and cut to fit. Apply the moisture protection tape to the underside of the countertop. Cut the services holes exactly as directed in the install manual. There are two primary ways to attach the dish drawer to the cabinetry. The front side mounting brackets and the lower cabinet mounting brackets. You may also use the optional top brackets, but only in conjunction with one of the other two methods. To install the front side mounting brackets, push the A brackets into the top right side and move it into position by gently tapping with a small hammer. Pull the rubber trim piece over the bracket as seen here. The B bracket goes on the lower right side. The A bracket on the left side goes on the bottom. Be sure the tabs come through the other side of the slot. And the B bracket on the left side goes on the top. Initially level the unit before sliding it into place. Remove the tape fastening the hoses and power cord to the back of the unit. To make feeding the hoses through the services holes easier, tape them together as seen here with the electric cord sticking out a little further than the hoses. Carefully feed the hoses and power cord through the services holes. As you do this, push the dish drawer into place, only pushing on the edges. Be sure not to kink the hoses while pulling them through. For the front side mounting bracket option, after ensuring the dish drawer is level and in its proper position, remove the rubber screw covers and fasten to the cabinetry as shown here. Replace the rubber screw cover. Repeat these steps for the other three mounting brackets. To install using the cabinet brackets, you will first need to remove the bottom drawer. Unclip the drawer from the rails by pushing in on the release tab and then backwards on both sides. Now pull the drawer all the way out and lift it off the rails. Push the rails back in and carefully place the drawer off to the left side as seen here. Check that the unit is level by placing a level on the front edge of the cabinet and the side rails. If adjustments are necessary, the leveling legs can be accessed from inside the cabinet. You may find the supplied hexagonal sockets useful. Use the supplied screws and locate the bracket holes through the insulation and fasten.
repeat these steps for the other three locations. Pull the rails back out and place the drawer back onto them. Pull the rails forward until they click into position as seen here. The drain support must be installed a minimum of 29 and a half inches from the floor. If the support cannot be mounted this high, mount it as high as possible and then ratchet the hose up to the required height. Fasten the drain support to the rear wall directly above the services hole. Unwrap the tape from the hoses and power cord. Feed the drain hoses through the drain hose support. Locate the O-ring clamp, and joiner. Place the clamp on the joiner and attach it to the garbage disposal. Note, be sure the knockout is removed inside the garbage disposal before attaching the joiner. Tighten the clamp with a 5 16 socket. Place the drain hoses against the joiner to determine the appropriate length. Be sure there are no sags between the support and the joiner. Carefully cut the drain hoses. Slide the wire clamps onto the end of the drain hoses and insert them into the joiner. Squeeze the wire clamps and slide them into position to secure. Be sure the hoses are routed as seen here. Place the O-ring onto the end of the inlet hose and attach it to the water supply. Tighten with an adjustable wrench, but be sure not to over-tighten. Slowly turn the water on and check for leaks. Open the drawers and remove the toe kick and all of the packing tape. Be sure the spray arm is in position and spins freely as seen here. Now plug in the dish drawer power cord. Add three cups of water and advance to the rinse cycle and press the start pause button. To prepare the toe kick, place it upside down against the side of the bottom drawer as seen here. Mark where the bottom of the drawer meets the toe kick. Place the toe kick on a protective surface and score along the line closest to that mark with a utility knife.
Fold the plastic at this point and bend it back and forth until it breaks off. Use a file to clean up any rough edges. Snap off the two end tabs and place a screw in each side as shown here. Partially screw it in. Slide the toe kick onto the track and close the drawer. Line the toe kick up with the face of the cabinetry and tighten in that position. Remove all other packing material and ensure the customer has the owner's manual and the quick start guide. Go over the final checklist at the back of the installation manual to ensure no steps were missed. You have now completed the installation of the Fisher & Peichel dish drawer.